Hello, my name is Bart Brecka, and today I'm going to share a video showing the RSD Pro Cable workflow using Pro Cable and RSD together. The class that I'm going to pull my material from today is from a training class, our, our Pro Cable training class. Pro Cable Harness Design Workshop. Just wanted to show that to you real quick so you can get an idea. We do that class probably four or five times a year. Two or three people in it. Seldom more than four. Design Engine has a job board and Pro Cable is in big demand by itself but Pro Cable with RSD is in huge demand. A lot of companies are trying to implement this workflow and there's not very many people out there that know the workflow so consider coming to Design Engine in the future. This is our training material. Each day is set up with an abundance of material to cover. The portion we're going to cover today where I'm going to pull my information from is this Kawasaki Ninja headlamp where we're routing from connector to system lamp. The RSD portion has already been exported in a previous video and I'm gonna I'm gonna import that data into Pro Engineer so that we can route those wires automatically through Pro Cable. Before I start, however, I need to kind of share with you what we need to do to set up the model tree properly. If you'll notice, I created this Kawasaki headlamp using a top-down design surfacing methodology. But when I come over here and look at the actual harness itself, notice I put an H in front of it so that we can find all the cable harnesses in Intralink or Windchill. Notice I have a skeleton model inside of here as well. So I actually have two skeleton models. Top-down design is a big portion of Pro Cable, and it's one of the reasons why it's difficult to learn. At our design engine class, we like to do a two-week Pro Cable class because a lot of people that come to us for Pro Cable don't already know top-down design. So that's that's a one-day class. RSD you know it's hard to do that in just one day but then that only leaves us three days for pro cable so it's it's really difficult to get a one week pro cable class all out of the way in one week but you know we do it we just have to stay late so I'm gonna open up the harness itself and talk about why this skeleton model exists. I'm going to hide the skeleton model and notice this is what the cable harness would be. It's got some connectors, um, a grommet. It's either captive or not ca captive. In this case I don't have a slice through it so it's got to be supplied from the cable harness vendor. I'm going to unhide that and go back to the main assembly for a moment and look at the structure still. So this is a subcomponent, a subassembly in my main assembly. And if I had a multitude of harnesses, there would be a multitude of harness assemblies. Let's come over here and look. I talked a little bit about routing from connector to systems component. This is a, a bulb. But if you look on the back of the bulb, there's actually a connector. And if I turn on my coordinate systems, you can see that the that the connector has a series of entry ports. Um, in my class, I just call it entry 01 and entry 02. I might deem, if I were building a systems library for your company, I would probably choose to use something like E1 or E2. It's less to type and less to problem solve if there's a typo somewhere. If you'll look at the the connector, I've got it called, I'm going to left click on it, right hold down and open it for a second. I have to resize my window so you can see it, but it's not completely necessary. You can see the connector itself. Notice I have a little 
wire, uh, let's see, a, a datum curve hanging off of there. That's simply so I can have something to adhere to. If you do this in your system's library of components, somebody's liable to delete that out of there. So there's in the class, there's a lot of workflow challenges that we're struck with that uh, I talk about that I don't have time to cover in, in a 20-minute video. Okay, so <clears throat> we talked a little bit about the model tree. I need to open it up a little bit. There's, there's some things we need to do to it. For example, I'm going to turn on suppressed objects and features. That way I get my little insert arrow. Also, I like to go to my co tree columns, maybe turn on feature number. Feature number is not completely necessary. I'm just trying to help you remember where what to click on. I don't necessarily need to see the fact that something's designated, but I would like to see maybe the length of the wire and the diameter. You can spend some time looking at some of the other items that you could bring over to your model tree. Adding feature number just takes up a little bit more space and it's not necessary. For training purposes it's kind of helpful because you actually see that there are feature numbers. Now that I've set up my model tree pr appropriately, let's, let's, uh, we, could, we, can, we can do a number of things. We need to create the harness part, then we need to import the RSD data. What I'm going to do now is flip over to the cabling module. Pro Engineer is a software package that's sold in modules. So I can come over here and create a harness in Wildfire 5, or I go over here and create a harness. I'm going to call the harness the same thing that my, this is basically our, our training phone number, the school's phone number. I'm going to hit OK and OK. And notice, Notice it actually created a part, and it's, it's, it's as if the part is active. Now, this part you can't retrieve in Pro Engineer without the assembly. The harness is actually tied to an assembly, so it's, it's not something that I could just open up and rename. This, this can certainly be renamed in Windchill and Interlink, but it's, so you need to be careful what you call it. That's why I'm choosing a specific number. Now I need to either import logical data or create my route network. I call that my expressway bridge. Let's go ahead and import the logical data first. I've exported it in a previous video. And if you'll notice, I've given it a Kawasaki01.xml. My indication here is that I'm going to have to do a multitude of exports and imports to get this to work. I just want that to be clear that that's part of my workflow. Notice I've got it successfully read in. After I read in that logical data, I need to kind of get my eyes on it and see what's there. It's part of problem solving failure mode in Pro Engineer. You really need to be at your at your peak wit when you try to manage failure mode, especially if somebody else modeled it. So this is part of my um, workflow to understand what what's not what's what's happening right or wrong so I'm just gonna hit wires wires here and hit execute I just want to get my eyes on what wires are available for me you can see all the wires that exported out of RSD and if I flip over to RSD and show you that model you can see I've got wire 21 22 24 26 23 28 27 they're all tied to a, a spool and if you'll notice, I don't actually have any spools in my geometry. So I'd have to add spools, I'm sorry, splices, and, and uh, route to those in a separate stage. Let's go back to the comparator and take a quick look again. No cables, so I'm not going to bother with that. Connect your, connect, con connectors and components, let's look at that. So it's, it's reading my connectors. Let's look at wire spools. Okay, so it brought in four 
of the wire spools. The wire spools are created in Excel and imported into RSD and then they come across in the XML data. Okay, so I hit wire spools and hit execute to bring up this window. Now that I've got my eyes on the comparator, I can kind of come down and look at what's been auto designated. If you're familiar with Pro Cable at all, you know that without the RSD addition, you have to designate your components. In our first day of the Pro Cable class, I like to teach how most companies use Pro Cable without the RSD module, and we try to do that all in one day. So if you don't know top-down design, that's one at least a day. We do a typical, typically we do a two-day top-down design class, but we can cram it all into one day. There's a, how, how do you run Pro Cable without RSD one day class? There's learning RSD. So there we've burned through three days. Now we only have two days to learn the auto route functions that are available to us. It's really difficult to get through this Pro Cable in one week. We have a lot of four week students come for in Pro Cable, you know, non degreed engineers. We get a lot of electrical engineers for training, but the idea is to take a non degreed person and get them a job in the military sector. They, they, we really need to make them an expert, and that takes just under two weeks to do that. So if you're interested in a two-week class, call and inquire. There's the phone number. So now I need to create my expressway bridge or my route network. And so just take a mental note here that we've created the part itself. This is the, the cable harness part. And uh, down here, I've got the route network option. I don't know if you can see the tag. If I hover over it, you can see the, the, the tag call out. So I'm going to click that and start to create my network ops. This interface has changed quite a bit for Wildfire 5. So I just ditched a couple of spots on there. I'm going to ditch here. I'm going to bring in my... Uh, my connection point up to the top. Notice I have a nice curve in there for myself that I can adhere to as I as I dig across these geometries. And if you'll notice this side, my connectors come in the other side. You can see the Z is coming in. So I'm going to bring in my my wire route to kind of bring it into this direction. This is my suggested expressway bridge for the, for the wires. And if I'm routing through an aircraft such as a drone drone aircraft, the military is going to order no one aircraft alike, and each each air, avionics bay is very different. So, Pro Cable and RSD is is very handy in those kind of situations. That's why we have to use top down design because I can't bring up 17,000 parts into an assembly and expect it to spin in shade. I need top down design to simplify that assembly, and that's where this comes in this external copy geometry here. All my bulkhead information would be there. All right, so I've checked out of my my uh, route network functions. To get back into it, I can just click route again. See how it turns yellow? Now I need to come up here and create a new segment. And this segment will be from here to here. That kind of straightens up the entry into the connector. And then I want to click on that location right there. I'm not sure if that's a term used in Wildfire 5 anymore, but that's how we used to call it in Wildfire 2, 3, and 4. I'm going to click on the Depends On function here and then click on that location. And you can see I've got an expressway bridge that's routed through here. Do you see how this cable wanted to flip tangency? It's uh, relatively easy to get in there and flip those tangencies as well using that same tool. I'm going to left click, right hold down here and go to Route again. The entire cable turn, the entire net, uh, route network turns yellow. I'm going to come in now and insert myself a new segment, but this time I'm going to come uh, from this location, new location, and make it a depends on dependency. And then each other option is going to be kind of bouncing out of here. If you'll notice, 
this side, I can route straight into those two wires and just take a mental note that my Z direction is coming out of the connector. So I can just leave it kind of like that, and I middle click to check out of that. Now I've created a, a sort of route for the wires. Let's go get our eyes back on the wiring diagram and notice that I have Y24 going from one connector to the next. And if you'll notice, I don't have that off-ramp from my expressway bridge to the other side. So that, 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 that uh, cable is going to fail. So in our class, we spend a considerable amount of time trying to get understand how to problem solve. You know, much like when you first learn Pro Engineer, maybe you didn't learn how to redefine a feature. We kind of focus on how to how to problem solve geometry so that you're more than competent when you get to get to work. So now it's time to try to actually route some wires. So let's come in here now and look at what wires we want to route. I'm going to bring this window over here so you can see it. I'm going to hit find and it's finding all the wires that I have access to. I'm just going to click all of them and push them over and realize some of them aren't going to route, right? Because we can see I've got two wires that auto routed and we we would expect to see a wire coming from here coming across over to this other side and that that's not occurring because I don't have that expressway bridge uh, trajecting across there. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply here and and uh, let's let's do the thick cable so we can see. Notice none of my colors came across. So in a in a later video I'll play with adjusting those colors and we'll put that expressway bridge across there and get that route. So I'm going to hit cancel here so that and and uh, basically come in and delete those those uh, those cables because we can do that in a later stage I just wanted you to see how you can get in here and actually click click on the actual wires and hit delete out of the out of the uh, model tree and it's really easy to come in and kind of reroute those wires thanks for watching my video Please consider coming to Design Engine in the future.